Hello, this is Billy Core from the Carolina Circle Mall Wiki. Today is Monday, February the 2nd of 2015. And those of you who don't know, um, I actually um, got my PC to TV encoder card um, working again. I thought the um, card itself had just started to go bad, but it turns out it was just the VGA cable I was using. It, it had... Um, gone bad so I replaced it with a much much nicer VGA cable and now the picture is as clear and as crisp as can be well for something like this that is so I figured why not take this opportunity to um, show with actual hardware how to restore your Packard Bell that runs Windows 95 to factory settings now this um this will vary quite a bit um, depending on the era of your Packard Bell system. I know um, ones from like 1997 and so and that era are a little bit different, actually quite a bit different in, um, res in restoration. Um, tonight we'll be using my Packard Bell Legend 402 CD which is which will use a Packard Bell Master CD from the month the Packard Bell was manufactured, um, which was August of 1995. And this will be one of the more simple um, Packard Bell restores that you'll see. Um, it's There's really not a whole lot to it, just keep in mind a few things and you'll be good to go. So um, let's go ahead and um, fire up the machine. Um, now I'm adding the narration track um, after I've um, recorded the footage of the restoration process because I haven't been able to figure out a way, a, a, a sensible way that is, to um, talk over um, the capturing process with uh, my video editing. So, um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's get started. Right, the Packard Bell Legend 402 CD is now um, booting up. This is a Hillary board, but this process will be the same for no matter what Packard Bell motherboard you have. And we're, go and we're going to be booting from our um, Master Restore floppy that would that comes with your Packard Bell computer. If you don't have one, um, Google it and you should be able to find one on some archive website I forget the name of. Or you could also use a Windows 98 boot disk if you're so inclined, which is actually a little bit simpler. But we're going to do this the true way with a real Packard Bell Restore floppy. Alright, we're booting into 95's version of DOS. Now this is a... I did slightly modify this diskette a little bit. So it'll um, be compatible with non-Packard Bell OEM CD-ROM drives like this particular system has. And it's loading the... CD-ROM device driver successfully. Now it's loading the mouse driver. Had a few issues with the mouse driver while I was um, running the restore process. Might have been my KVM switch, I don't know. Alright, and it's assigned the CD-ROM a drive letter, which is drive letter Y. And we're now about to go into the um, restore menu. But we're not going to go to restore pre-installed software yet because when we do a system format, when we format the hard drive, a lot of times it, will, it won't have enough memory to run it through that menu. So we're just going to drop back into the DOS um, menu and do it manually. And now I use the Q switch there so we can do a quick format. However, if you do not already have a formatted partition, um, first you'll have to make the partition with F disk, but you will um, you won't be able to use the quick format switch. The S switch is what will be used to copy the system files over so the hard drive will be bootable. As you can see there's the system was transferred meaning that the um, hard drive is now bootable. So it's getting its mind together here and now we're gonna now we're rebooting the system once again so we're chugging on along just fine. Um, I'm using a CF card by the way in this system just because it's easier and more reliable. <laughs> and because it's my prerogative, um, no offense to Bobby Brown, 1989. <laughs> All right, we're going to go through the boot floppy boot again. Um, same thing as before. It's going to load all the uh, drivers, and I'm going to drink some hot chocolate.
That's hot! Seriously though, that was kind of hot. Good though, but hot. All right, we should be, should be getting back into the restore menu again. And for some reason it did not detect the mouse even though it was perfectly plugged in and the optical light on it was lit up. I'm guessing my KVM switch freaked out for some reason, but it it's work it, it does work though eventually. Alright, now we're going to want to go into Restore Pre-Installed Software. We're going to go down to Restore Hard Disk Drive and Restore Hard Disk Drive. We'll say yes there. I'm going way too fast here with the video. And this is the part where it's going to ask you for your format number. If you don't have it, just leave it blank. It'll be fine, but I'm typing in the format number that did come with the 402 CD, which is 556003. But again, if you do not have one, it will just simply ask you if you would like to restore a generic format, and you just tell it OK, and it will work just as well. So this is going to take about 20 minutes or so to restore all the files to your hard drive and or CF card. So I will um, edit the rest of this out, and um, we will resume on the other end of the restoration. Okay, now we're just about done, and we are done now. The restoration was successfully completed. Um, pat yourself on the back. Um, you have done a good job, and you deserve a medal. So we're going to exit out of this little program here. Wait for the floppy disk to do its thing. Remember, this is old technology here. All right, restore complete. So we're going to exit back out. And we're going to go back to the um, DOS command prompt, and we're going to remove the floppy disk, and we're going to reset the system again. All right, wait right for it to post. It does do a little beep right around in here, but the but it's from the PC speaker, which this capture cord cannot pick up, as you can imagine. All right, we're starting into Windows 95. Here's one of my favorite screens in the whole world, getting ready to run Windows 95 for the first time. Oh, this brings back so many memories, so many fond memories, especially that background there. And this brings back memories, too. Congratulations on the purchase of your new Packard Bell computer. We are sure we'll meet your... Thank you for choosing Packard Bell. Again, I was going too fast here. But those screens there are very, very cool to see. Okay, and it's going to copy a couple little files here, and basically from here on out, um, this is what you would have gotten when you first when you would first power on your Packard your brand new Packard Bell computer after buying it from the store back in the 90s. And it's going to do some device detection. As you can tell, it uses a Windows 3.1 style um, interface. I forget, I, there's, there's a name for this, but I don't remember what it is. Usually it takes a little while for the joystick and the MIDI to detect. Okay, it's going to copy a few more files. This will take about a minute or so. Again, this restore process will vary depending on the Packard Bell you're using and the Master CD you're using. This style of um, restore was used up until about the later part of 1996, I believe. All right, now um, Windows 95 wants our user information, so we'll go ahead and type that in. You'll type in your name. We'll type in our name. We'll type in our name. We'll type... Oh, there we go. And if you want, you can put in your company name. I'm not going to this time. I um, I totally read that license agreement. Okay, now we're going to type in our... Okay, um, we just put in the product key. I, of course, edited that part out, but um, it will ask you for your product key. So just um, type in your Windows 95 product key and um, hit Next. So now um, Windows 95 is... Um, 
installing some more devices. I have always adored that little um, drum that that beats itself. It's uh, one of those simple little things that amuses me about old computers. I'm a weirdo. Don't judge me. Okay, setup is ready to restart the computer. So, um, again, make sure you don't have any um, disk in your um, floppy drive. And then we're going to hit OK and reset the computer. I like how my uh, PC to TV encoder, when you reset the machine or you're not getting a, a, a VGA signal from your computer, it, it shows a television style test pattern. <laughs> again, another weird quirk that amuses me. There's that awesome screen again. Okay, and it did pick up the mouse this time. It wasn't before. And now it's going to... now. Pa Packard Bell includes this little utility that detects certain um, Packard Bell related hardware like your sound card, CD-ROM, that kind of stuff. Alright, it was not able to detect the CD-ROM, but that's okay. It did detect this, the sound card, which is definitely okay. The only downside about it not detecting the CD-ROM is that you will um, not be able to use it in DOS, but you can always install the DOS drivers at a later time. And the reason that happens is because um, it's I'm not using a um, Packard Bell OEM CD-ROM that would have originally shipped with it, which is the same reason why I had that modified um, boot floppy, so it would actually work. All right, and the rest of the um, process here is pretty much your st is your standard um, Windows 95 install. The later part of the Windows 95 install. Windows 95 is now setting up your hardware and any plug-and-play devices you may have. So, home stretch here, folks. We're getting there. Pretty soon, we'll have a brand new functioning Packard Bell system, so you can play. All of your humongous entertainment games, and your, um, and you can dial into America Online, CompuServe, Prodigy. Okay, now it's setting up the control panel, programs on the start menu. Okay, it's about to configure Windows Help. And again, I, abs I absolutely love it when it does that, when it shows the pen writing in the book. Again, I like these little quirks. Some Usually it will ask you for your time zone, but for whatever reason it did not this time. And now we're going to reboot again, and this should be, and this is the final reboot, and this boot up will be our first true boot up into Windows 95. That good old classic Windows 95 screen. That splash screen there. Again, this is all real hardware. This is for, coming straight from the Legend 402 CD, one of my favorite Packard Bells. Do we have sound? Why, yes we do. The good old Windows 95 Microsoft Sound. That's and Welcome from Packard Bell. We offer you two computing environments to choose from. What can be said? Packard Bell's Navigator or Microsoft Windows. You may also begin by taking a quick lesson on using the mouse. Spoiler alert, using the mouse does not involve sticking it inside your belly button. That's actually quite painful. But that was Packard Bell Navigator, and here I'm just going checking through a few things in Device Manager. You you probably will have a communications port resource conflict, but that doesn't affect anything. And uh, we're going to set the wallpaper there, and that's pretty much everything. We now have a fully working Packard Bell system with all the Packard Bell software that originally shipped with it. So, good work, guys. Billy Core signing off.